five utilities that go into RV lifestyle and van life. Water, waste, electricity, chassis gasoline, and the fifth one is internet. Today we address the internet. Thanks for tuning in to another Q&A Friday uh, where I answer your questions as your benevolent host. My name is Scott and welcome to Go Small Live Large. We are a channel dedicated to van life out of a 2019 Winnebago uh, Travato lithium equipped. Lithium, lithium. Um, and we are dedicated to sharing that lifestyle in really awesome places like Chicago, Illinois. Camped out downtown Chicago last night. And so that's the places, and then the people we meet. Uh, along the way, I'm meeting all kinds of really amazing entrepreneurs, may, uh, meeting um, uh, van life people, RV life folks, and uh, we're sharing those as we go. Uh, Q&A Fridays, you send in the questions, and I will hopefully provide some answers. So let's get into today's video. We are focusing on uh, internet, Wi-Fi, connectivity for the RV lifestyle. Let's get into it. about that for a view, boys and girls. Pretty spectacular. So what we want to address is the wine guard system right here. Let me get a little further so you can see it. So it's right here. Um, it's a plastic covered uh, four antennas. Uh, there's four cellular and I think two Wi-Fi. I'll pull that up here on the screen for you. You can see that it is physically mounted to the uh, top of the van, uh, bolted in and then covered with tar, much like the plumbing stack and the um, air conditioning for uh, leak-proof purposes. And the intent of the wine guard is to pull in a, a distant um, Wi-Fi wi or cellular signal. Um, I would say it does a pretty good job, not great, but pretty good. Uh, it certainly serves the purpose that I have, which is to um, create a hotspot network around the van that uh, my devices connect to in addition to uh, grabbing uh, signals uh, from uh, uh, alternate sources. Now, now where I've had great success with this is like rolling into a Planet Fitness, uh, maybe close to an Apple store, someplace where I know they got pretty good Wi-Fi and have the password. Um, so if you're parking really close to um, a source of Wi-Fi and have the password it actually works pretty good in that case um, Wi-Fi I wouldn't say that it really uh, pulls in a great uh, you know a, a slow signal and and boosts it but it will certainly capture it um, but I, I'm using my Verizon jetpack for for cellular and then using the jetpack source as the cellular uh, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity that the wine guard there then uh, connects to. So let's go back inside and I'll show you how this um, whole thing sets up but overall really happy with this. Not a lot of places to put it. You can see here that there's that's about the only option for it. Um, I had this installed by Lazy Days RV in uh, Tampa, Florida. It did in a um, in about uh, well, better half of a uh, half a day. Um, the unit itself costs about 400 bucks, and another I think about 400 bucks or so for installation. So uh, I've been really, really happy with that. Let's go downstairs. We'll well, let's go down the ladder. We'll show you what's up. So I wanted to share with you is um, talk about the wine guard in particular, but talk about uh, my connectivity to the internet in general. Um, I have four ways to connect to the internet. One is using my cell phone. I use an iPhone. Um, this is a Verizon service. Really like Verizon, much better than AT&T. Um, it's really good signal everywhere I've gone except really rural Wisconsin so far. Um, the great thing about this is that with our plan, uh, I can use this as a hotspot. So this is kind of a backup plan um, B, I would say. Um, 
Backup plan C is to use my iPad. Now this is on AT&T service, and I too can use this as a hotspot to project a, a, a Wi-Fi signal uh, for my devices to connect to, or the WineGuard system itself. So this is plan C. Uh, WineGuard actually provides uh, cellular service through their own provider. I'm not sure who they actually contract with, so I've never tried it yet, but this is plan D, uh, the WineGuard. And it's somewhat expensive. Uh, it's uh, 10, 10 gigabytes for about 60 or $70. Um, it's full speed, full throttle, uh, but that will be used up pretty fast. Um, I use that uh, as plan D, so the fourth way to connect to the internet, using the WineGuard system itself uh, with their own provider of cellular service. So plan A, you're probably asking, what in the heck is plan A, is this. And this is a Verizon hotspot. This is what's lovingly called a jetpack. Um, I purchased this in February after a colossal fail with a Verizon a dealer in, in Florida. Um, postpaid is what I had. Don't get postpaid. Get prepaid. Prepaid is the key. Prepaid unlimited. Uh, and the reason that is uh, as such because it is truly unlimited. Um, now I've had really, really good luck with these guys. Um, it's $70 a month reoccurring on a prepaid basis using your credit card. So very, very important to get the prepaid system. Um, the signal strength has been excellent. The download speed has been excellent. I'll show you that. Um, I just really, really love this. It's USB-C charging, so I can charge it right from uh, my USB ports or from a, a 110 outlet. And uh, what it does, this itself creates a Wi-Fi network. It's password protected. And you can see here that I'm downtown Chicago, so not surprisingly, it's got really good service. Can you guys see that? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but it, it, it creates its own network. And what I then do is connect the wine guard to this. I use my wine guard to connect to this. Um, and then the wine guard uses this as the, as the signal source, the, the internet source, from then to create uh, the, uh, my own go small, live large network, password protected, that all of my devices connect to. Now if I'm doing a lot of um, like video work, um, I actually connect my laptop, my Mac, directly to this, um, because I have found that this is actually uh, slightly stronger in, in strength than what comes to the wine guard. But I'm okay with that. Um, when I want to have a, um, you know, an all-encompassing network, and then I might attach my laptop just to this device, uh, with everything else, well, with the wine guard connecting as a second device connected to this uh, self-produced Wi-Fi network from the hotspot, that um, then my other devices connect to the wine guard. So it's kind of a two-step. I hope I'm doing a good job explaining that. So again, the Verizon Jetpack um, pulls the cellular signal down from Verizon. It creates a Wi-Fi network. I then connect the WineGuard system to that network, creating another network using this device, the WineGuard, called Go Small Live Large. So if you're actually sitting here next to me, you could see that network. Um, it would be pa password protected. And then my other devices, like my phone, like my iPad, they would then connect to the WineGuard generated Wi-Fi network pulling down from the Verizon signal through the jetpack. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me show you how these devices connect. Um, let's do that now. All right, so let me walk you through some of the steps of this, uh, this WineGuard system here. So you can buy this and install it yourself. Um, again, I chose to have uh, Lazy Days install it. So the parts of the system are the antenna, mounting plate, power cable, the power switch, and the wall plate, which are right here, we'll show you that. So it does come with instructions, can I see that? It does come with instructions to how to mount it. Um, I prefer the assurance of an RV dealer doing it. And then it kind of walks you through a really kind of a cryptic, although easy to follow, a way to set up a local area network and that's key so it's going to again it's going to you're going to connect to um, uh, set up a wine guard signal uh, using a uh, uh, the the verizon jetpack as the um, as the source and it talks about you know changing the password 
um, updating the software. Uh, again, it's, it's a little cryptic. You need to use Chrome uh, on, on my iPad. I used uh, a, a Safari that didn't work very well. So Chrome works pretty good. Um, the manual actually is pretty good, I would say. Here it talks about swapping the SIM card. Um, so I could put the Jetpack uh, SIM card from this into the unit. I did not want to do that. I wanted to leave what's in installed by the factory so I could have maximum flexibility on my Jetpack. Uh, but you certainly could do that. Watch it walks you through the directions there. Um, and then talks about support. And when you go to their website, it talks about the plan. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I have the WineGuard app here on my iPad. I'm gonna to touch it, it's right here. And uh, this is the Connect 2.0, which is the device on top of the roof. I'm gonna to touch this, and you're going to see that um, Go Small Live Large is the network that it is generating, but it's looking for a source for internet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch um, search for a source. We're gonna have the jetpack here come up in just a second. You know, my only real complaint about this thing is that the operational um, functionality of it is really slow. Um, the wine guard connected to the jetpack, you can see that. Now I'm going to touch the WineGuard app on my iPhone, which is right here. And you're going to see that the WineGuard Connect 2.0 is generating the Go Small Live Large Wi Fi network using the internet source of the Verizon Jetpack. You guys see that? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's test the internet speed. So, this is again coming off of the Verizon Jetpack through the WineGuard system creating the Go Small Live Large Wi-Fi network around my van. You can see there that the speed is 13 megabytes down, um, and that's pretty good. Uh, probably being downtown Chicago helps, and away from the buildings. And essentially that's what it does. Now if I go to my iPad settings, you're gonna see here that I've got Go Small Live Large as the connected uh, Wi-Fi network, but I also, you also see that I have the Verizon Jetpack as an available network, but I'm not using that because I do want to go through Go Small Live Large. Now I could switch these up, and I sometimes do that on my Mac when I need maximum throughput. Um, so this is kind of interesting. This is pulled up here. This is Xfinity Wi-Fi. If you have an Xfinity account, what I found is in urban areas primarily, large urban areas, Infinity, uh, Xfinity Wi-Fi pops up and the speed is pretty robust and I can connect my wine guard to this. Reserve this and Xfinity is available. I turn this off and I then use my, I use Xfinity as the internet source that the wine guard pulls from. Um, again, if there's a Planet Fitness, if there's an Apple store, um, they usually, have, and they're really, really close to the parking lot and you can get real close. Um, you can pull that Wi-Fi or inter, uh, uh, well, pull that Wi-Fi signal in to the wine guard. So you can point it at uh, many places and then use that as the internet source. So I find it to be really, really flexible. Um, this is the switch right here. You guys can see that. So this is the on off for the wine guard system itself. My only really complaint on the system is it's, it's operationally very slow. So it takes about four minutes to power up, pretty slow. You know, if you're touching through the app, so you guys can see that. Uh, again, it's pretty slow. You kind of saw that on the internet speed. I mean, the interface is kind of clunky, right? Test your internet speed is the first button. It says, hey, would you like to test your internet speed? Duh. <laughs> Um, but it, it, operationally, it, it, the, the taps are fairly slow from an iPhone standard. But overall, I'm really, really happy with the way the WineGuard system works. I would really recommend you taking a look at it. Um, again, for the few reasons that I mentioned, um, which is uh, it, it pulls in Wi-Fi signal. It will pull in a, 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 a cellular signal if it is the, the cellular source. Um, maximum flexibility, so I can generate um, internet from three devices here uh, that it can then pull in from using the Go Small Live Large network, or uh, it can generate its own um, internet signal through its own Wi Fi uh, service, which is really, really cool. Now, you probably have seen um, that I store the jetpack right up here. 
right up here in this space, and this is where I also charge it. So I just tuck it right in here, and that works really nice uh, from a storage standpoint. And what I often do is, is actually leave it though on the table to remind me to turn it off. So you get a little chuckle out of this. Um, so I've had this jetpack now since um, since February, right in February, I believe. Um, actually, it was in January, but February 2019 was the first month I had the, the service and was using it uh, pretty much exclusively. Um, I was being sensitive, and um, the next month, March 2019, I was not being sensitive to Verizon. Um, I turned it on, I left it on, I was streaming movies, uploading videos, I was going to town. Um, just a few days before the billing cycle, I got a, it, it, it essentially stopped working. So I had to call Verizon Tech Support. It took about a half hour to figure out what the heck happened. Turns out that I had consumed so much data that they essentially, while unlimited, had throttled it back so far that it was basically useless. Um, I discovered that in February 2019, I used 60 gigabytes on the Verizon network using this little device. And in March, or wait for it, 135 gigabytes of data over this little jetpack. Um, and that's essentially why they sort of turned me off. I was on like, you know, uh, uh, you know lane D uh, for don't use it like this. Um, really throttled me down very, very hard. Um, so now I'm a lot more sensitive. So I turn this off at night. I remember to do that by putting it on the table and then I charge it right here um, using the, um, if I'm in a 12 volt uh, conservation mode this or with the actual 110 up above. So hopefully that answers some questions. It's been a long time coming, uh, but I've really enjoyed this setup. Now I know there are, there are some RVers and van lifers that put a, a Wi-Fi or a cellular extender on a big ass pole that sticks way up into the air. You know, I just, I want maximum flexibility and that's my priority. Um, I stick to urban-ish areas and I've been in some pretty rural areas and this system has worked really, really well. Um, what I love about this, um, this WineGuard is, again, the maximum flexibility to point to a internet source, and then it uses that source to feed my Go Small Live Large Wi-Fi network. And what's really cool is that even in 12 volt conservation mode, the WineGuard operates uh, as expected. Um, now, if I want to use my Apple HomePods for creating a really nice music environment, I do need to turn on the uh, inverter, not a big deal, in which case I can power those devices with my Apple HomePods because they need to connect to a network. And they can they uh, connect to the uh, Go Small Live Large network, which is generated by, by the WineGuard. And I, even if I don't have internet connectivity, but I do uh, have electricity from my Volta Pier 3 system, um, I can stream a uh, from my mu uh, Apple uh, Music library to the Go Small Live Large Wi-Fi network to power music for my Apple HomePods. Hopefully that's making some sense. I'm going to do a video on the music because it's really um, just the, the greatest thing is to have those HomePods connected to my Go Small Live Large Wi-Fi network generated by my WineGuard um, and then streamed either uh, from my iPad, either um, in radio mode from Apple Music or from a library. So just to summarize, five utilities necessary for RV a lifestyle and van life, fresh water, wastewater storage, electricity, chassis fuel, and internet. Today we covered the internet. And uh, again, hopefully that was uh, uh, helpful for you. Really appreciate you uh, asking that question. Many of you have asked uh, at long last, I've answered that question for you. Really appreciate each and every one of you watching, viewing, commenting. Channel growth going crazy. Um, it's just it just warms my heart, and I really do thank each and every one of you. All right, now that I got a little coffee going, coffee. Thank you, Pure 3 Lithium System. I just made some coffee back here while wow. still camped out at the Chicago waterfront. But what I want to show you guys is how I use the Wi-Fi network generated by the WineGuard system to uh, produce, produce some lovely music. I'm going to press shuffle. This is my uh, downloaded music library on my iPad. So we'll get a little music going. And I'm going to press the uh, the song button here. And this is the... Um, you know, gener you know, 
where you want the sound to go button. I'm not sure what the technical name for that is. So I'm gonna to touch that. And you can see here that I have living room. And this is the Travato uh, Apple TV, but living room is the two home pods. And that again is connected to the WineGuard network. You can hear that difference, right? Holy cow. So the home pods, I have one up front. It's the white right here. And then in the back, I have one. Um, this is uh, in the back on top of this little uh, cubicle storage thing and the bed rail is right here. So the bed comes down over this so the home pod is fully protected. Um, gotta have the space shuttle, of course. Uh, 